invoking the blessings of the Lord of the Universe, Satchitananda Parabrahma Paramatma, the producer and director of this cosmic movie show. Vande Krishna Foundation presents Meditation, the Ultimate Medication Dedicated to Yogi Protoplasm Disciple of Ramana Maharishi and Yogi Rama Meditation, the Ultimate Medication Is meditation the ultimate medication for any problem-facing man? Let's explore. Please join me on a voyage of self-discovery. Self-discovery is self-recovery. Meditation is simply reminding yourself again and again that you are not the perishable physical body but a divine eternal soul full of bliss, peace and cosmic love. One who meditates becomes a spiritual magnet and radiates joy and peace and becomes a channel for the inflow of divine energy. Meditation destroys all causes of sorrow for the root cause of any sorrow is attachment to the perishable body. Chanting of Om helps to break attachment to the perishable body and helps one to attach to the imperishable soul. Once established in one's soul blissful nature, one learns to watch the ups and downs of life like a drama and be mentally unaffected. Example, Ramana Maharishi, the great South Indian saint, had cancer but was not dependent on doctors and medicines and remained immersed in the bliss of Samadhi or super consciousness till his last breath. It has been scientifically proven that during meditation brain waves actually do change. When you meditate there is less beta, the thinking and stress related brain waves and more alpha, theta and delta the relaxation brain waves. Numerous scientific studies have proven that regular meditation has many health and other benefits. 1. Reduces dependency on medicines. You save on doctor's bills. 2. Cuts stress and psychosomatic diseases. In AIDS patients, their T-cell counts increased. In heart patients, the heart disease got reversed. Depression patients recovered. Cancer patients showed remission. Chronic pain decreased, etc., etc. Third, develops intuition, concentration, memory and willpower. Fourth, makes mind peaceful, stable, an equipoise in the ups and downs of life. So many youngsters commit suicide nowadays if they don't do well in exams or suffer heartbreaks. If kids were taught to meditate at a young age, they wouldn't play with their lives. Fifth, improves relationships. A doctor couple on the verge of divorce were taught to meditate. Soon they stopped fighting and withdrew the divorce case. Six, cuts alcoholism and drug addiction. If one can get drunk with soul bliss through regular meditation, why would one ruin one's life with drugs and alcohol? Seventh, improves productivity and efficiency. Eight, aura colors improve. Through Kirlian photography, one can see one's aura colors. Somebody who is very materialistic will have a red aura. A spiritual person will have a purple aura. And an enlightened master will have a white aura. 9. Leads to moksha or enlightenment or freedom from the repeated cycle of birth, old age, disease and death. What 
is real disease plaguing man? It is I disease, the sense of I-ness and minus. First attachment starts with the perishable body. My body, then my family, then my money. But even this body is not ours. It will certainly be burned to ashes one day. If neighbor's house and family get burnt in a fire, I am not bothered. But if my family and property is burnt, I am shattered. So root cause of all sorrow is attachment. Destroy this eye disease with the sword of self-knowledge. Now what is real goal of human birth? Health and wealth. But however healthy or wealthy you are, your body will certainly disease and die, won't it? Now let me ask you another question. Where are you sitting right now? I am sitting in your office right now. We are all currently in Mithya Loka, the kingdom of disease and death. Here three kinds of suffering can finish man at any time. 1. Natural disasters like earthquakes, tsunamis, famines, etc. 2nd. Man-made disasters like war, terrorism, rape, etc. 3rd. Diseases like cancer, AIDS, heart disease, etc. So Mrithya Loka is like a prison, an open-air jail, a temporary place full of suffering. But what do most of us do all our lives? Fancy clothes, fancy jewelry, fancy makeup, fancy cars. Finally, fancy diseases, fancy hospitals and fancy funerals. Mrityu Loka is only a fool's paradise. But our Upanishads talk of higher Lokas like Brahma Loka, where there is no disease and death, absolute bliss and eternal life. God tests us in Mrityu Loka. The more simple and selfless we are, and the more we love everyone as our own self, the more our chances of promotion to Brahma Lok. But mostly human love is very selfish and conditional. Look at the high rate of divorce, female feticide, rape, murder, etc. Our society is rotting because man has become so selfish. Even if you don't believe in Brahma Loka, but if everyone started living simply and selflessly, Mrithu Loka would certainly become Swarga Loka or Heaven. The Gita extols the virtues of oneness, Vasudev Kutumbakam, that the entire universe is one. Just as the one ray of white light refracts into seven different colors when passed through a prism, Brahman is seen as the diverse world when seen through the prism of the body, mind and intellect. You are strongly entrenched in feelings of otherness. Most people are not living in a spirit of cooperation but cutthroat competition. Spiritual growth is not measured by the number of scriptures mastered or pilgrimages undertaken. It is measured by the experience of oneness you experience and live. Once upon a time, a teacher wanted to test her students. She held a feast for them. The happy students sat down on the table. The children said their prayers. They were about to eat when the teacher said, Wait, dear students, here is a small test for you. Please eat, but do not bend your arms. Now you may begin. The students were puzzled. How could they eat without bending their arms? Some of them got angry. Was the teacher playing a trick? Suddenly, a bright student spoke up. He quickly told all the others. Let us each feed the student in front 
In this way, all of us can eat with our arms held straight. The teacher came back. She saw all the students enjoying the feast. Each student was feeding the students seated in front. The teacher was happy. Her students had passed the test. If the students had not helped each other, all of them would have missed the feast. So, by helping somebody else, you only help yourself. Now, let us do an experiment. Please bring a microscope. Let us examine a cell under a microscope. What is it made of? Protoplasm. Right. So whether you are rich or poor, black or white, male or female, we are all made of protoplasm. So there is a unique unity behind the baffling diversity. Upanishads also say the soul is one in all. So we must practice cosmic love. But alas, due to ignorance, man has become so selfish and so greedy and crime and corruption on the increase. Ignorance of the real goal of a human birth is the real disease plaguing man. Example, a dog entered a hall which had mirrors everywhere. The dog started attacking his own image. The dog hit here and there and got injured. Similarly, ignorant people see different bodies and start fighting with each other. But a man of wisdom only sees the one soul in all and radiates cosmic love. Angulimal Dekhoit came to kill the Buddha. But the Buddha with his compassion was able to bless him and elevate him for he only saw the dormant divinity in the decoy. Like there are three kinds of suffering, there are also three kinds of intelligence. First class. Buddha had first class intelligence. He was a prince, had a beautiful wife and son and could have spent his whole life parting. But he saw old age, disease and death, questioned suffering, did intense meditation and attained enlightenment. Second class, problems are happening all around us, but only if some problem hits my head, only then I wake up and start questioning life and search for a way out. Third class, you are engulfed in problems, but it only leads you to drugs and depression. Most people have second or third class intelligence. First class intelligence like the Buddha is very, very rare. Now, let us do a simple exercise. Close your eyes and visualize your own skeleton. It is made up of 206 odd bones of different sizes. Mentally take your x-ray photo and carefully examine your skeleton. The body is a moving commode. It has so much dirt inside. It sweats and produces repulsive odors. Yet we identify ourselves so much with this perishable cage and pamper the body so much. Most of human life is spent pandering to the needs of the perishable body. Now, ask yourself the eternal question. Who am I? Am I this perishable body which will certainly disease and die? Or am I a divine eternal soul full of bliss, peace and cosmic love? Who am I? Can this inert skeleton do anything by itself? There must be some intelligent power operating this skeleton. Affirm the idea that you are not this perishable cage made of flesh and bones which will certainly disease and die. You really are an imperishable soul which is eternal, all blissful and all pervading. By doing the skeleton visualization daily, you will get detachment 
and you will try and lead a more simple and selfless life. Om, the ultimate healer. Though there are many meditation techniques, as there are infinite ways to the infinite, in this film we will discuss a meditation technique called Pranava Nada Anusandhan, which means research on Om Mantra. Six stages of chanting Om will be shown also. Mantra Sadhana is the most beneficial method to keep your mind, body and soul in perfect harmony. Mantras help to master the monkey mind. The vibratory sound of Om is happening in every atom of the entire universe. This vibration is constant and unaffected by a person's race, religion, etc. It is thus not surprising to find its reminiscence in all religions in some way or the other, whether it is Amen of the Christians or Amin of the Muslims. Om has three letters, A, U, Ma. A symbolizes your waking state. U symbolizes your dreaming state. M symbolizes your deep sleep state. Om, taken as a single unit, stands for Thurya, which is the fourth state. Mandukya Upanishad reveals the secret meaning of Om, which is the name of Brahman. It gives an analysis of the three states of waking, dreaming and deep sleep, and how to reach the fourth state, Thurya, whose nature is Sat Chit Ananda, which means absolute existence, consciousness and bliss and is the substratum for the three changing states. Pain cannot touch the one who gets established in Turiya state through deep meditation. Meditation on Om with devotion and meaning leads to realization of Brahma Gyan or self-knowledge. Chant Om with the spirit of inquiry and devotion for you are invoking the blessings of the Lord of the Universe. Every time you chant, ask yourself, Who am I? Am I this perishable body which will certainly disease, decay and die? Or am I a divine child of God made in His image of eternity, immortality and everlasting bliss? Who am I? Mantras have power. Supposing I abuse you, won't you get up and slap me? If one abusive word can incite you to violence, imagine how much power God's name will have and how much capacity it will have to burn the impurities in the mind and elevate us. Mind has two layers, conscious mind and subconscious mind. Conscious mind is only 10%. Subconscious mind is 90%. One can reach superconscious mind through regular chanting and meditation. One should meditate at least 20 minutes in the morning and evening for it takes a minimum 20 minutes for the mantra or positive affirmation to reach the subconscious mind. Now let me ask you a question. What are most of us searching for? But where do we search for this happiness? Mostly in wine, women and wealth, right? But Tetreya Upanishad says, a mind which has been purified by selfless work, when that pure mind sits in deep japa and meditation, the bliss that it then experiences is million times greater than the bliss of a billionaire who has enough of three W, wine, women and wealth. So, a pure mind is really your passport to becoming a bliss billionaire. Example, a thief was traveling with a swami in a train. 
The thief saw the Swami counting a lot of cash and putting it in a bag and locking it. When the Swami went to the toilet, the thief started searching for the key of the bag. He searched everywhere on Swami's side but could not find the key. Exasperated, when the Swami came back, the thief blurted out the truth. Swami ji, I must confess to you that I am a thief and wanted to steal your money. Please forgive me. But please do tell me where you have hidden the key to the bag. I am dying of frustration. Son, I have hidden the key under your pillow. Now, the thief has searched everywhere, but certainly not under his own pillow. Similarly, out of ignorance, man searches for happiness outside him in wine, women and wealth, but real everlasting bliss is only within, in the bliss of the soul. So learn to tap that soul bliss through daily deep meditation. Mantra's Effect on Water Dr. Imoro, a Japanese scientist, performed experiments observing the effect of prayers, music and mantras on the crystalline structure of water. He filled two jars with water. Jar A was subjected to several hours of insulting and abusive language, while Jar B was exposed to positive vibrations to chanting and prayer. The jars were then frozen. After freezing, it was found that the crystals in jar A were ugly and deformed, while the crystals in jar B were like beautifully shaped diamonds. If this is the effect on water, imagine the effect of positive vibrations on the human body. Since it is 70% made of water, and imagine the effect on a fetus, which is 90% water? That is why our rishis of yore would promote Garbha Sanskar. That is, if a pregnant woman does a lot of chanting and meditation, she can put spiritual sanskars or impressions in her child right from the womb stage. So we find modern scientists corroborating truths what our ancient Rishi stated. In fact, our Rishis also spoke of Garbadhan. That is, if a couple want to attract a spiritual soul in their womb, they should chant, pray and meditate first and then try for a baby. Garbadhan and Garbasanskar should be taught to all would-be parents so that they can raise kids who are simple, selfless and spiritual and not greedy and corrupt as we see in society today. By simply observing one's breath, one can measure one's spiritual progress by a technique called prana pratyavikshana. Put your finger below your nose and try and find out whether your breath is running through both the nostrils or only through one nostril. If it is running through only one nostril, find out which nostril is more active, right or left. When the left nostril is more active, it is called Chandra Nadi in yogic terminology and when the right nostril is dominant, it is called Surya Nadi. If the left nostril is more active, the mind will be more meditative and peaceful. If right nostril is more active, the mind is more argumentative. When the breath flows equally through both nostrils, that state is called Sushumna and is an indication that the mind is deep in meditation. According to yogis, the number of breaths per minute is limited to 15 or 16. Yogis have found that as the mind becomes pure and subtler through deep meditation, the number of breaths per minute decreases. Mind your mind. To do any work in the world, your mind must be in a proper condition. That is why Swami Vivekananda once said, If I have to start my education again, 
I will not start reading many books. I will focus on improving my concentration. If you have a concentrated mind, you can read many books in no time. Example, Swami Vivekananda once went to a library and asked for a book. Give me a book on world religions. Here. After one hour, Swami Ji returned the book. I have finished the book. You can have it back. How is that possible? How can you finish such a thick book in such a short time? Okay. You can ask me any question from the book. To the librarian's amazement, Swamiji answered all his questions. The librarian was shocked. He asked Swamiji his secret. Swamiji said he did not need to read sentences or paragraphs. He reads whole pages in a glance. This is what is called photographic memory. We also can improve our concentration powers with regular meditation. Now, do you want to learn a technique to erase egos? Yes, erase egos. Close your eyes and visualize your blood circulatory system. Hundreds of blood vessels are transporting blood to every part of the body. Very great biochemical knowledge of physics, chemistry, etc. is needed for constructing various organs and make them function. Who is the designer of this remarkable machine called human body? Your heart is pumping, your stomach is digesting, your brain is processing, etc., etc. Who is performing all these incredible functions? Evidently, there is some highly intelligent, mysterious power combining all sciences together. Supposing your next meeting is with the Prime Minister and you are very, very excited to meet him. But suddenly, your heart fails. Can you meet him? So, there is a higher power running this cosmic movie show. Surrender and become egoless. Lesson. Cultivate humility and understand that you are not the doer. You are only an instrument of God. Mahatma Gandhi shook the entire British Empire, but he never said, I did it. He always said the Lord's will was done through him. Greatness lies in being humble and simple. But most people nowadays are religious and ritualistic, but not spiritual. They quarrel over religion, but there are infinite ways to the infinite. They do a lot of pujas or pray to fulfill some worldly desire for a son, money, etc. That is called commercial devotion, trying to do business with God. Spirituality, on the other hand, implies living a simple and selfless life and seeing and serving the one Lord in all, whether rich or poor, male or female, white or black, healthy or sick. So ask yourself, am I a religious person or am I spiritual? Now please close your eyes. We will do two more visualizations. One, bless those who hurt you. Visualize someone who has hurt you and send this person vibrations of forgiveness and love and pray for this person. Oh God, please give me strength not to judge and criticize people, but help me to be able to bless, heal, and awaken that dormant divinity. You only have come in the form of this person to test me and exhaust my past life karma. Help me to see you in all, love you in all, and serve you in all. This exercise is very powerful and helps to heal relationships, dissolve anger and hatred, and develops compassion. Negative toxic emotions like anger, 
hatred, jealousy, etc. only cause unease and lead to disease. Second, death visualization. Imagine your dead body lying on the floor. Everyone around you is crying. Then four people come and take your dead body to the funeral pyre. Your body is then burnt and slowly turns to ash. Your body, which you had decorated with fancy clothes, fancy jewelry, fancy makeup, etc., is slowly turning to ash. Nothing is going with you at the time of death. Your family, your money, your property, your status, nothing. Then why do we become so greedy and so selfish? Most of the crime and corruption on the planet is due to greed and selfishness. Death visualization gives detachment and inspires one to lead a more simple and selfless life. Time is ticking away. Pause. Reflect. Introspect. Start an introspection diary today. Ask yourself daily, was I regular in my prayers and meditation? How much time did I waste in gossiping, watching silly serials, etc.? How much energy did I waste in getting angry? Did I do anything selfless today? Get busy in improving yourself. By improving yourself, the world will automatically improve. Now, let's check your KQ. Karmic quotient. Why is one baby born crippled and poor, while another healthy and wealthy? Through past life regression therapy made popular by American doctor Brian Weiss, we can explore the law of karma and reincarnation theory. Example, Maya was suffering from depression. She had given birth to three sons, but unfortunately they died soon after. She slipped into depression and was near suicidal. She was taken to a past life regressionist to cure her depression. She was regressed and taken back to a past life. Sure enough, it was found that she had been a gynecologist in her past birth and had committed many female fetuses for money. Law of karma was catching up with her in this life. No one can escape the law of karma. As you sow, so shall you reap. If everyone understood that by harming somebody else, he is only harming himself because one soul pervades the entire universe, no one would harm another and all crime and corruption would stop on this planet. But because people are ignorant of the law of karma, the reincarnation theory, and self-knowledge, crime and corruption are flourishing on this planet. Now, let's talk about a timeless technology that can heal our troubled time. Triple T, Turiya Transformation Technology. Imagine if the whole planet started meditating leading simple selfless lives and reach the Turiya state of unconditional cosmic love, we could stop all wars, crime, corruption, etc., etc. on this planet. Imagine! Now sit with your spine erect and close your eyes. Omkara chanting can be done in six steps. One, Vachikam. Chanting is done aloud. Loud chanting should be done in such a way that sound appears as if coming from navel. If done correctly, 
Breathing slows down oh. and ultimately Kumbhaka or stopping of breath is attained. Step 2. Upamshu. Repeat the mantra without making an audible sound while making an O shape with your lips. Step 3. Chitta Japa. Chant the mantra mentally. If your stomach goes inside and breath almost stops, then you have attained natural kumbhaka. It means you are chanting correctly. Mental chanting is considered the best but is the most difficult as the monkey mind tends to wander. Step 4. Anahata Nad Anusandhan Do the Shanmukhi Mudra. Plug your thumbs in both ears, four fingers on eyes, middle finger below the nostril and rest on mouth. In this mudra, external noise is totally cut off and you are able to listen to Anahata Nad or sound of Om as it is originating from inside. Upanishads describe that Anahath Nath is continuously going on inside, but we are not able to listen to it because our minds are gross, extroverted and impure. Mind must be purified, concentrated and introverted to be able to taste its soul bliss. You may see lights and colors within as mind becomes subtler and purer. Step 5. Brahma Bhavana, Expansion of Consciousness Imagine your body filled with an awareness of a circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding the circle of love, light and joy. Now imagine your whole body filled with the circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding the circle of love, light and joy. Now imagine your whole house filled with the circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding. Now imagine your whole city filled with the circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding. Now visualize your whole country filled with the circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding. Now visualize the whole solar system floating in the circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding. Now it includes the Milky Way galaxy also. Awareness, awareness, everywhere. Keep expanding awareness to include Andromeda and other galaxies also. The entire universe is filled with awareness, awareness. Awareness everywhere. Listen, your Divine Father is the circle of love, light and joy in which worlds and galaxies are floating like bubbles. You and your Divine Father are one. You and the infinite are one. You are not this perishable body subject to old age, disease and death, but pure awareness which permeates worlds and galaxies. You are a part of Sat Chit Ananda, Bara Brahma. Keep reminding yourself that you really are a divine eternal soul full of bliss, peace and cosmic love. Keep reminding yourself. Step 6. Prajna Pratyavikshana this is an open-eyed meditation. Keep your eyes open. Don't look outside. Look within. Center your attention on awareness and keep affirming mentally, I am awareness. Observe the observer. If you succeed in this meditation, objects outside will appear hazy and finally disappear. If you don't have time to do six steps daily, do at least two steps. Loud chanting and then shift to mental chanting with devotion and self-inquiry. Mental chanting is more powerful but more difficult.
Vande Krishna Foundation conducts MUM, Meditation Ultimate Medication Movie Cum Meditation Workshops of around two hours. To organize a workshop for your organization, please email us. Workshops have been done for Bilbara Group, Friends Club West, Lakshman Public School, etc.